I just landed my dream job. I couldn't wait to start and I was about to have the time of my life and finally earn some money. When I received a phone call that would devastate my life forever. My husband. He was involved in an accident, so I rushed to the hospital just for the doctor to tell me this. I'm like 30 years old and my name's Ellie. I put a lot of effort and commitment into obtaining both a master's and a doctorate. I frequently receive compliments on my beauty and while I'm flattered, I don't really pay attention to it. I'm adamantly independent, I've never been on to depend on others, and I've put a lot of effort into getting to where I'm at now. Like, taking a walk or reading a good book, I adore the straightforward things in life. I enjoy making others laugh and have a good sense of humor. Life is too brief, in my opinion, to take yourself too seriously. When I first met the love of my life, Aiden, I was 29 years old. I had just finished a brisk run in the park near my apartment on a gorgeous summer day. I was filled with life and energy, and I was eager to return to my profession. I came across a lovely man reading a book on a bench, as I was making my way out of the park. As I got closer, he raised his head and our eyes met. When I grinned and moved past him, I experienced an electric shock through my body like an eel. When I drove home, I couldn't stop thinking about him. He had this alluring quality about him that I could not get rid of. I could not help but sense that we were meant to meet since there was something so alluring between us. I noticed myself gazing out the window at the park below as I entered my apartment. It did not escape my attention that he might still be there. I just made the decision to go for another run in the park the next day. He was still seated on the same bench as before as I circled the walkway. I made the courageous decision to approach him this time. Um, excuse me. Uh, I couldn't help but notice that we seem to be running into each other a lot here lately. <laughs> I'm Ellie. He smiled and stood up, extended his hand, and said, Hey, I'm Aiden. Nice to meet you, Ellie. I couldn't help but notice how attractive he was when he shook hands with me. He had these piercing blue eyes and dark hair that was pulled back from his face. He was wearing jeans and a t-shirt to keep things casual, yet there was something assuring about him. As soon as we got to talking, I found out that he was a surgeon. He had just ended a lengthy shift at the hospital and was devout to his job. We discussed our hobbies, families, and aspirations for the future. I couldn't help but sense a connection between us as we spoke. He had a certain quality that made it seem as though we had been best friends for a long time. He requested that I join him for a stroll through the park as the sun sank, and I happily agreed, and over the course of the next two hours, we explored the park and discussed a wide range of topics. I was confident that I've met someone wonderful by the time we said goodbye. As I made my way back to my apartment, I had a flutter in my stomach, and I just couldn't stop thinking about him. I felt a rush of exhilaration when I saved his number on my telephone after we swapped the digits. We began to get to know each other uh, one more after the coming week. We went on dates to restaurants, parks, heck, even museums. We discussed our future aspirations, and I noticed that I was growing more in love with him every day. My thoughts turned to marriage soon after, and it turned out that he shared them. One day, while I was returning from work on foot, Aiden sprung the proposal on me. He got down on one knee and pulled out a tiny box, which caught me off guard to the point where I almost lost my bag. My heart was pounding. Ellie, I love you more than anything in this world. Will you marry me? I started crying as soon as I knew what was going on, and the man who had been my constant companion and law-breaking accomplice for the previous two years was the one I wanted to spend the rest of my life with. Yes. Yes, of course, I'll marry you. Yelling out while my voice was shaking with emotion. The following few weeks were filled with anticipation and busy preparations. 
We decided on a date for the wedding and looked through Pinterest for inspiration and discussed how we envisioned our future together. Only a small number of our closest friends and family members attended our modest wedding. Aiden and I were made for each other because it was the ideal, sincere, private moment. So, I started looking for a new job soon after and applied to a couple of places that I was good fit for. And some others that I was underqualified for, but hey, I applied to them on a whim. Well, when I got the call, I was in shock. Since I got my PhD, I've been dreaming of receiving the job offer of a lifetime. I was going to work as the director of research for a prestigious medical organization, which would both be demanding and rewarding. It was an exciting and nerve-wracking day, to say the least, when I started my new work. I was eager to get started and contribute, to put my knowledge and abilities to work in support of the company's objectives. What's up everybody, Mr. Reddito here. I hope you're having a fantastic day. So it looks like things are starting to change in the life of OP. New job, new lover, heck, seems pretty nice. Well, there's multiple updates for this story and things are just getting started. Guys, if you're new to the channel, I animate and narrate stories every single day. So go ahead and click that subscribe button if you're enjoying the content today. And let's see exactly what's going on with update number one. For months, Aiden's been preparing for a road trip with his friends. He was eager to take on a much needed break from his surgical practice. I continuously cautioned him about the weather prediction and told him not to go because of the weather. But he was adamant about going. He told me that they would exercise caution and closely monitor the weather together. I had pleaded with him to simply stay at home. The risk is not worth it, was my motto. But Aiden, who has always been the daring type, had persuaded himself that the journey would be okay. He reassured me, don't worry, with a smile and said, I'll be careful. When a team of emergency responders called, I was at work. All at once, I felt dread, stress, and fear. Aiden had been in a major accident and the phone operator informed me right away that he was being taken to the local hospital. I'm sorry to have to tell you, ma'am, but your husband, well, he's been in a major vehicle accident. He has numerous wounds, so we're taking him to the closest hospital for urgent care. As I heard those words, I thought my heart would stop. Oh my gosh, will he be all right? I questioned while trembling, after saying, he's going into surgery when we get there? He quickly hung up. I hurriedly left work and made my way as swiftly as I could to the hospital, hoping against hope that he would survive. At the hospital, I learned that Aiden was undergoing emergency surgery. While I sat in the waiting room, fidgeting while tapping my foot and watching the time on my clock, the wait was terrible. Every minute seemed to last forever. I couldn't quit thinking about Aiden and how bad his wounds were. My worries and concerns, well, they were flying through my head as I waited for the doctor. What if he's unable to ever walk again? What if he claims that I was to fought for his decision to go on the trip? What if I offend him forever and he doesn't forgive me? When that door swung open, a tall middle-aged man wearing scrubs entered the room, breaking my train of thought completely. Hello, my name's Dr. Chen. I'm the attending doctor overseeing Aiden's care. He replied while putting out his hand. I shook his hand and made an effort to sound calm. How's he doing? Will he be all right? Dr. Chen sighed and sat down next to me and he said, I won't mince words, Miss Smith. The damage to Aiden's pretty extensive. He has a broken leg and a few other minor wounds, but his partial paralysis from the waist down is the major issue. At those words, my heart fell. Wow, partially paralyzed? What does that mean? In the incident, ma'am, he suffered a spinal cord injury. The extent of the damage is unknown still, but he'll probably require considerable amount of physical therapy just to restore some of his mobility. 
My eyes started to tear up at the corners. Aiden, who was always athletic, energetic, might never walk again. How was he going to handle that? What would I do? What does this suggest for his prognosis in the long run? I asked the doctor, attempting to maintain a steady tone, and Dr. Chen was hesitant to respond to this one. But he did say, It's too soon to make a firm judgment. Every incident of a spinal cord injury is unique to the person, and it might be unpredictable, but I can tell you that after he is discharged... He's going to require a lot of in-home care and acute care. Also, he'll require full-time care at least to the start. As I tried to process everything, my mind began to race. I would have to take care of him full-time because he would need it. He wouldn't be able to work any longer and I had recently begun a new job. How could we handle everything? Can you think of anything I can do to assist him, I inquired, hoping to find a solution to his suffering, and I just received a tiny smile from Dr. Chen. And he left me with these words. Being present for him right now is the best thing you can do for him. In the upcoming weeks, in the upcoming months, he will require a lot of emotional support, and if you're open to it, we could use your assistance in his recovery. I nodded. Grateful for something to do and said, of course, I'll do whatever I can. My hand was stroked by Dr. Chen before he got up. The nurses will take you to see him after I let them know you're here. While he's still unconscious, you're welcome to sit next to him. I experienced a feeling of fear as I followed the nurse to Aiden's room. There was a long and challenging journey ahead of them, yet I was also aware of my love for Aiden and my willingness to do whatever it took to facilitate his recovery. Update number two. We found ourselves in a tight financial spot as a result of the accident. The medical expenses were rapidly mounting on us and Aiden was unable to continue working as a surgeon. I was compelled to leave my new career in order to devote all the time I have to care for him. It was a major adjustment for us to start living on such a tight budget. I started working online as a freelance writer, but the compensation was a far cry from what I was getting before. Trying to juggle taking care of Aiden and earning enough money to keep us afloat required continual juggling. Aiden was the center of my new routine. Every morning, I got up early to make sure he had all that he needed and was comfortable. He had to go to the hospital for testing and therapy appointments several times a week, so I had to drive him there. I had to adhere to a strict budget and make sure every dollar was covered. All of the grocery shopping and housework fell upon my shoulders. I also had time to finish my freelancing work on top of everything else. I worked long, hard days. There was no free time during the day, and as soon as my head hit the pillow, I would exhaustingly fall asleep, only to wake up in the next morning and repeat the process all over again. So, I can still recall being mentally and physically worn out and overburdened. Aiden was in a lot of agonies, and it was difficult to see as he struggled to cope with his new situation, but... I also experienced a sense of fulfillment in caring for him. I was determined to do everything in my power to ensure that he was okay, since I knew how much he needed me. There were times when I felt as though I was drowning, and that I couldn't handle the weight of anything. Aiden would then turn to me and gaze at me with a thankfulness, and I would then recall why I was doing this. I would sacrifice anything for him. Because, well, I loved him. We were still content despite the difficulties. The fact that we still had each other was sufficient because, well, he was still here. We discovered happiness in the little things. Bonding over our favorite TV shows. Sharing meals. We discovered how to rely on each other. And help one another during the most trying of circumstances. Any advice or comments you want to drop down below would be so helpful. Update number three, major outbreak. 
everything just seemed to be going wrong. Which is something I never anticipated feeling, to be honest with you. Our lives had been drastically upended by Aiden's accident. I was finding it difficult to balance all I've going on, including care for him, pay the bills, clean the house, and working on my internet projects. I hardly had any time to myself anymore, and I had the impression that time was simply flying by. Even though I was aware that Aiden was not to blame, I occasionally could not help but harbor a small grudge towards him. We used to be able to do things without having to worry about paying medical bills or providing care, and I missed that life. I yearned for the days when I could go out with friends, without continuously checking my phone to see if he needed me. I felt cut off from everything and everyone I ever cherished. My relationship with my friends was basically over, and I seldom had the stamina to interact with others or go out. I felt as if I was caught in a never-ending loop of providing care, and I had no idea how to get out. The hardest part was that I was beginning to lose any feelings about it. I scarcely felt anything anymore since I was so accustomed to the daily grind of going to work, caring for Aiden, and running the household. Even now, I wasn't sure what I wanted or needed, though I was aware that this was the wrong way to feel. I felt unable to stop myself from feeling it, though. All I wanted was for things to return as they had been before. Yet... I also understand, I do, that it's not possible, which only made me more furious and useless at the same time. I wasn't sure how much longer I could handle this. I lost significance in my life briefly before finding it again. Matthew served as the vehicle for this meaning. I once went grocery shopping after spending several hours seeing Aiden in the hospital and bringing him home. I was so deep in concentration that I was unaware of the trolley's quick approach and the man driving it, who was peering over his shoulder. My hands lost all control of the groceries as, well, his trolley collided with me. He apologized passionately and bent down to help me up. He said, still holding on to one of my bags, oh, oh, I'm sorry, I was distracted by how gorgeous you are. I was shocked by that. I couldn't recall the last time Aiden told me I was beautiful. And it's been a while since I felt that way, but something about this outsider made me feel comfortable. I attempted to dismiss his remark by saying, It's okay. No, really, let me make it up to you. I'm Matthew. How about I buy you a cup of coffee? With a sculpted jawline, sparkling blue eyes that twinkled when he smiled, and a tall, lean build, Matthew stood out. He appeared to be active and in a good shape, thanks to his broad shoulders, powerful arms, and casual, well-fitting clothing. I couldn't help but notice Matthew's piercing blue eyes, just peering back at me with concern <laughs> as I gathered up my strewn items. His gentle nature and laid-back approach drew me to him instantly, as I was immediately at ease due to his undaring grin and kind demeanor, and as soon as we got to chatting, I found myself thoroughly engrossed in the discussion. I could not help but be attracted to him, emotionally and physically. I briefly considered whether it was a wise idea to travel with a complete stranger, but there was something about him that gave me a sense of security, so I don't know, I just chose to accept it. He insisted on holding the door open for me and pulling out a chair for me to sit at, as we strolled a few blocks to a quiet coffee shop nearby. We placed our drink order and struck up a conversation. I discovered that he went by the name of Matthew, was a software developer and had recently relocated to the city. We spoke for hours, and I discovered that I liked him more than I ever could anticipate. He was pleasant, and he was amusing. He had a way of making me feel heard and noticed, and I experienced an opening with him that I had not experienced with anyone else in a long time. My phone rang as Aiden texted me as we were finishing off our talk to find out where I was. I suddenly became aware of the hour and how late it's gotten. 
I apologized, regretting that I've become disoriented by the passing time. Matthew joined me in raising up and remarked, Ugh, it's okay. Meeting you, Ellie, was extremely wonderful. As I bid him farewell, a twinge of regret passed through me, though. I hadn't felt so connected to someone in such a long time, and I could not help but wonder what would have happened if things had turned out differently. I couldn't get rid of that notion that I had just had a unique experience as I walked home with my shopping bags. But as soon as I entered the room, all those emotions were set aside as I was once more confronted with the fact that I would be spending eternity, the rest of my life, with Aiden. Matthew and I continued to meet in secret throughout the coming weeks. I felt bad about not telling Aiden about him, but since I only saw him as a friend, I didn't see it as cheating. I had never encountered somebody like Matthew, and he gave me life once more. We discussed just everything from our preferred movies to our goals and our hopes. I found myself opening up to him in ways I haven't even done with anyone since he was such a good listener. Matthew showed me around the city to hidden cafes, rooftop bars, even a hip-hop hangout area that I've never been to before. He was constantly introducing me to new things, and I began to perceive the world differently as a result. I eagerly anticipated our meeting, and everyone was more enjoyable and excited than the previous ones before. The mood was electric as we sat in a park one evening and watched the sun drop the horizon. I felt joyful for the first time in a long time while we were joking around and having a good old time. Our eyes locked as Matthew turned to my face. Suddenly, he leaned in and kissed me. I was taken aback and pulled away instantly. I can't do this, I said, turning away from him. Oh, I'm sorry, I, I didn't mean to overstep. Uh, uh, I'll call you later, I said and left in a hurry. Update number four. I'll be honest with you guys. The urge to see Matthew once more was too great for me to resist. I've been attempting to avoid him for some time now, but I couldn't get rid of what I wanted to see. Him. Although I tried to convince myself it was just a friendship, I knew it was more than that. I inquired if we could meet up in a text message to him. As I awaited for his response, my heart was beating rapidly. I was aware that I was putting myself into danger, but to be honest, I didn't care. I only wished to see him once more. As he finally responded, my breath caught in my throat. He advised that we visit a brand new bar in town that had recently opened and I concurred. And we decided on a time. I couldn't help but feel bad for lying to Aiden while I prepared. Since the accident, he has done nothing but support me. And here I was sneaking around behind him. Nonetheless, I was unable to break my friendship with Matthew. I couldn't let the feelings go since he had given me life again. We gathered, had drinks. I don't know what would happen next, but I consented to accompany him and spend the next night in the same hotel room. Yeah, the worst aspect was that I felt absolutely no remorse after what we did. It felt as though a dam had burst, removing all my restraints, and I justified my actions by telling myself that I deserve to feel this way. I started an affair with Matthew behind Aiden's back. We met up several times over the next few weeks and had dozens of rendezvous together. However, all this wasn't meant to last. One day, after my date, I took the car home. I was overcome with butterflies in my stomach, and as I grinned as I, well, thought back on our chats, I parked my car, and as soon as I got home, I started to make my way to the front door. I welcomed Aiden as I flung open the door and headed upstairs. Well, a knock on the door was heard. There was a knock on the door, for sure. I'll get it, Aiden yelled. He had improved somewhat over the months and could use a walking stick occasionally. I pursued him down the stairs and found him there in front of the entrance. 
He had a shocked and bewildered look upon his face, and I immediately realized that something was wrong. He was looking at Matthew, who was holding a bunch of roses and was waiting behind the door before I could even ask him what was going on. I became aware that my treason had been exposed at that point. I told Aiden about our connection to Matthew, as Aiden wanted to know who Matthew was and what he was doing at the doorstep. My heart, it was racing. I realize I've made a huge error when I saw the anguish and betrayal in his eyes. I attempted to explain, but I could not find the right word. As I stood there embarrassed and guilty, there was simply nothing I could do. Obviously, the flowers were intended for me. Matthew explained, and he was looking for me. After telling Matthew to go, Aiden turned to face me. I was unable to tell him a lie when he inquired how long it's been going on, but I told him the truth, that we've been seeing each other for weeks now. Aiden's face dropped, and he looked away from me, obviously in shock at what I've done. I understood now that I'd profoundly injured him and that our relationship would never be the same again. As I saw him stumble back to his chair, his shoulders sagging and defeat, my heart was heavy. I was aware that I'd ruined our union and would have to deal with the fallout from my choices for the rest of my life. Update! When Aiden told me he was getting a divorce, I was in disbelief. Though I was aware that I deserved it, the thought of losing him shocked me. I was overcome with sorrow and guilt. How could I have been so self-centered as to offend the person who had shown so much care? As I felt the situation could not get much worse, Matthew texted me to tell me that he didn't realize he was ending a marriage and that I should never get in touch with him again. There was no one else to blame but myself because I had entangled him in my web of lies and deceit. My husband, my love, and my best friends were the only real things I had and I lost them. I was left on my own to wallow in despair and feel guilty about every decision I've made. In the end, Matthew was a merely just a trigger for my own demise. I had thought of him as my escape. I made an effort to speak with Aiden, offer my condolences, and ask for his pardon, but he had already made up his mind. I was by myself, had no one to turn to, and had only myself to blame. Unable to cope with the anguish and what went into deep despair as a result of the weight of my mistake. Ironically, I got my old job back, but my reality had become dark and depressing. I was broken and lonely now, with nothing and no one to come home to. I knew I deserved it, but it pained me all the same. What's up everybody, Mr. Redito here, so that is all the postings by OP. This story was crazy, for sure. It would be really hard to have to deal with everything in OP's life going on. But let me tell you right now. I came across another post, but this time it was from Aiden's point of view. So we're going to see what Aiden thought about this situation, about finding out that Ellie was cheating on him and whatnot. Here you go, update number one, Aiden's point of view. I always knew Ellie was the one for me. I exerted a lot of effort to earn her trust, and I still recall the day I first met her. With her grin illuminating the room and her hair gleaming in the sunlight, I made every effort to obtain her after that because I knew I had to have her. I remember when Ellie's grandmother passed away. I did everything in my ability to comfort her since she was inconsolable. I was there for her when she needed someone to hug when she cried, to listen to when she needed to talk, and assist with the funeral preparation. In order to be with her during this trying period, I even took off time from work. She was fired from her work at another point. Up until she found a new job, I gave her financial and emotional assistance. I advised her to persevere and never lose hope. I was there to affirm her value and all the wonderful qualities that she has. Then there was the time when she received a depression diagnosis. Although it was a challenging period for both of us, I was at her side all the time. 
I accompanied her to all her appointments, saw to it that she took her medication and gave her my whole attention when she needed to talk. I helped her along the way to rehabilitation. As a result of the accident, though, I felt lost and devastated. I was shocked to learn that I was now partially paralyzed from the waist down. I was unable to move the lower part of my body because of the pain that permeated through my entire body. I was lying on the hospital bed, looking up towards the ceiling, reflecting on how quickly my life changed. My job, my career as a surgeon, which was suddenly finished, was all I could think about. The emotional pain of losing my job and the passion I had worked so hard for to pursue was painful as the physical pain I was experiencing. For months, I had been arranging this trip with my friends, but Ellie, she warned me about the dangers and I simply did not listen. I felt bad about my choice and was upset with myself for not exercising more caution. I was plagued by guilt at the suffering and strain I had to put on Ellie. I was aware of the financial strain I would place on my mom, and just thinking about it made me feel even more forlorn and powerless. Then, however... I noticed Ellie sitting next to me and holding my hand. I was appreciative of her. She looked out for me, looked after me. <sighs> she did everything for me. Well, made sure everything was handled. I knew it was difficult for her because she had to quit her job to take care of me, but she just never complained. She had to handle everything, including bringing me to the hospital many times a week and during online work. And I could see it on her face building up. She never stopped caring. And I was aware of how lucky I was to have her. Knowing that our life had drastically changed and that we had to now start living on a tight budget made me feel miserable. But I also knew that I could do anything with Ellie in my court. I had to come to terms with the new situation and figure out how to go from here. Even though the idea of intense physical therapy was frightening, I was willing to do whatever I could to recover. I was aware that the path would be lengthy, challenging, but with Ellie's encouragement, I had the fortitude to endure it. I had to learn self-kindness, patience, so that I would not let my impairment define who I am. I knew it would take time to get back to where I was physically but I was grateful for every little step forward that I made. I did my best to help her as much as I could after the accident that left me incapacitated. Ah, she now had to take care of me. Although I had always been the one to take care of stuff, usually financially and whatnot, she looked frustrated and worn out, but I knew. I knew. I had to keep going for her benefit. I prepared meals for her, assisted her with the housework, and even taught her how to use a computer so she could get work done. I wanted to demonstrate to her that despite my disability, I was still able to support her. Well, as the days went by, I could not get rid of the impression that Ellie had undergone a shift. I wasn't sure why, but it felt like she was drifting away from me. Although I was aware of how difficult the accident had been for both of us, I was unable to pinpoint why Ellie appeared to be growing more away from me. I made several attempts to discuss it with her and provide my support, but she consistently dismissed my worries and insisted that everything was great. She was obviously upset about something and that genuinely concerned me. Ellie was never home anymore. She was constantly on the go and never let me know where she was going. It appeared as though she was leading a separate life from me. It was a heartbreaking revolution that I felt like I was gradually losing her. I couldn't help but just wonder if she was acting that way because of my disabilities and what happened. Perhaps she had become weary of looking after me, the many, many hospital visits, and to be honest, the astronomical medical expenses that was racking up. I understood. However, that was not the complete story. She was hiding something from me. Something else. I was willing to pay any price to learn what it was. I had a deep love for Ellie and could not face the idea of losing her forever. I just hoped that whatever her issues were, we could work through them as a group. Well, 
As I opened that door and found Matthew standing there with the flowers, I was in a state of disbelief at the moment. Complete and utter disbelief. I was physically ill to my stomach upon seeing him, and I experienced a complete sense of devastation. I couldn't really grasp what was happening when I found out Ellie had been cheating on me with this man, because honestly I was so shocked. I had trouble thinking, much less speaking. My mind began to race with ideas as I sat by myself in the living room. I experienced hurt, rage, betrayal. After everything Ellie and I have been through together, how could she treat me like this? She had been lying to me and sneaking around behind my back despite the fact that I loved her oh so much. After thinking about it rationally and logically, I realized that the best course of action right now would be, well, to get a divorce. It was the only way to move on from this. A dominal tangle we found ourselves in and start a new chapter in life. Although the thought of losing Ellie was indeed painful and sent a pang of fear throughout my chest, I knew that it was for the best. I couldn't continue living a lie and holding her back. Just let her live one and pretend that everything was okay between us when it wasn't. So, I informed her that we need to speak the following day. I felt the weight of the world on my shoulders as I sat there in front of Ellie. Although I was aware of what I needed to say, I was at a loss of words. I finally worked up the confidence to tell her that I was getting a divorce and moving back in with my parents. There, I said it. I expressed my regret to her for having to cheat on me as well for not being able to provide for her the life she actually deserved. I told her. She didn't have to worry about taking care of me and wished her all the happiness in the world. Looking at her that day, I could see the pain in her eyes as I spoke. Even though she anticipated it, it still pained her. I could see it. I made sure to express to her my devastation and my lack of forgiveness. She had treated me terribly and a small, vengeful part of me told me that she deserved the devastation. But, I don't know. So guys, this story was pretty heartbreaking for many reasons, but what actually got me the most was when we saw the different perspective from Aiden's perspective. Basically how he understands how OP could have came to this decision, because hey, this was hard on her. He wasn't exactly blaming her, but it was one of those just things that happen in life. And he understood he was holding her back. So guys, I want to ask you this. If you were in OP's tough position, what would you do? Would you stay with your significant other forever and, well, try to help them through this? Or would you do something different like what OP did? Guys, drop your thoughts down below in the comment section. Let's discuss this topic. I hope you guys enjoyed it today. If you did, go ahead and subscribe for daily videos. The best way to support me, all you have to do is subscribe. Have a great day, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.